kind of leads me on to the next point, which I think is really intertwined with um, this whole fraud prevention, um, which is there's ve there's very much like a a compliance and regulatory angle um, around this whole point as well. Um, I know that over the last couple of years and the couple of years to come, there's a lot of changes in financial regulations that are on the horizon, like um, UK SOX, for example, with PLCs, that is very um, heavily focused around things like operational resilience and fraud prevention. And it's the same again for financial services um, companies with um, new FCA regulations around operational resilience. And um, I believe a similar legislation is coming into place in the EU very soon as well. So this focus on operational resilience um, is very much at the forefront for businesses at the moment. Um, which kind of makes sense because of all the things that have happened this decade so far, like a pandemic, um, all of the the political stuff that's happening across the world at the moment. It's kind of shifted a lot of um, companies' focuses towards ensuring that they're future-proofing themselves against these sorts of risks and that they can operate in times of uh what's the word in, in times of um hardship i guess yeah it, the, the whole um shift as you said the shift in the market um with regulation now not just being applied to um l larger organizations but the the law firm i just mentioned that they'll be regulated by the solicitors regulation authority so the sra and and so actually regulation is is now going to apply to most organizations and will become a standard of how do I prove, not just internally, but how do I prove to my suppliers and my customers that I am um, I, I have the right processes in place. Um, so that's the first point. But then the second is, if you have a manual process, how do you then uh, show from an audit point of view that you are compliant with those regulations? it makes it much harder because you've got a manual process than to actually become compliant and and deliver those audit reports that you need to to then say that you are in line with the regulation so it's a double whammy effectively it's yeah i need to be compliant how can i show i'm compliant if i've got a manual pr process yeah that's a really good point even just preparing for these audits in itself isn't easy and um, like if you uh, having to map out your people process technology against processes that are primarily manual, you're going to have to be considering a hell of a lot of risk factors against those processes. Mm. Um, whereas if you if you if you go with the view of trying to simplify that down and maybe cutting out some of those risk factors from your processes, then it becomes a bit easier to map those processes out at the point of audit. Yeah. Uh, and it, it, this this is where you know, we started the conversation around bank portals and, and efficiency. And actually, we've really got down into the weeds. And now we're talking about regulation and the impact on the business. And, and we're not saying that these two things are separate. They're actually, the, it's the same conversation, but actually it becomes a much bigger conversation, not just about human efficiency, but about regulation for the organization.